Hey everyone, my name is Devin Townsend and welcome to GuitarMessenger.com. Hey guys, welcome to GuitarMessenger.com. My name's Evan, and I'm sitting here with the one and only Devin Townsend. How's it going, buddy? Doing good. How are you doing? I woke up approximately 40 minutes ago. Really? Out of a dead sleep. It's the first time on this tour I've been in REM sleep, so I think uh, whatever comes out of my mouth at this point, I will probably regret later. Okay. Nice. Well, could be interesting. <laughs> oh, it will be. All right. <laughs> so it's the, it's the last day, last mm -hmm. day of the U.S. tour. Yes, sir. How has it been? It's good. We're out with uh, Children of Bodom, Obscura, and Septic Flesh. And uh, that's typically not the scene that I would have expected to find the Devon Townsend Project playing with. However, we just released uh, two records simultaneously, Deconstruction and Ghost. And Deconstruction is relatively heavy in terms of its sound, and in my opinion, uh, very heavy in terms of its content. And so I think in order to add validity to this stage of my career, it makes sense to uh, uh, put us out with bands that are legitimately kind of part of a, a heavier scene and right. yeah, did we stand our ground? I mean, it's definitely do what we do and uh, <clears throat> no bones about it. Right. But I think that it's uh, been really good. I think if for nothing else, we offer an option, right? Definitely. Has the audience really been responding well to it? Yeah, cool. other than a couple of uh, petulant teenagers in New York that were giving me the finger, but I put my balls in their face and they were uh, thoroughly unimpressed. But I mean, I certainly wasn't meaning to offend you. Just, uh, you drew first finger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, the, the music has definitely progressed to something that, you know, it's changed over the past few albums to something really yeah. evolving. Yeah, and I mean, it's like, None of these four records are meant to be uh, a definition of where I am musically or even thematically at this point in my life. It's simply meant to um, <clears throat> represent in a sort of literal music sense how I went from being the musician that I had been with Strapping and Lad and all those records for that period of time to where I will be, you know, in the future, right? And. Uh, as a result of that, the four records cover the gamut from very quiet music to very complicated music, and there's some commercial things, there's some really sort of, you know, new age even sort of sounding things, right? And, uh, but again, none of them are supposed to be like a definition of who I am, but more of a statement of it's all kind of who I am, right? And uh, in the future, I just uh, have no real fear of, of doing whatever I want to do at this point, be it pop music or, you know, orchestral stuff or whatever and I think the most important thing for me to say with these records was simply that it's just like you know if you limit yourself to any particular genre then you end up sort of fighting it when you when you do choose to do something different so you All know right. there we go and when you I know that you wrote a lot of this material before you released any of the albums you kind of wrote sure, it. yeah did you know that it was going to be four records or did that was it just kind of naturally came out when you sat down to write well, I knew, I knew about six months into it, right? Uh, and that started from uh, the fact that I had made a lot of different styles. I mean, to back up a bit, when I had finished with Strapping Young Lad, I think on some level I was afraid of heavy music because in the past when I had been drinking or, or doing drugs or whatever, it had led me to creative decisions that I couldn't rationalize and therefore my personal life became sort of interfered with as a result of me in my own mind making heavy music so I was afraid to kind of let it go I was afraid to uh, write freely under the assumption there was maybe some sort of self-destructive mechanism in me as an artist that was always going to lead me to making these sort of decisions right, right. and um, so it took me a while to confront that and I think essentially deconstruction as a record is supposed to represent almost like an exorcism of that fear, right? But in order to get to that, what it required me to do was to just 
let it go and write whatever came naturally that represented that emotional um, frame of mind. And through that process, I found that I wrote a lot of different things without having to filter it. I found that there were songs like Coast off of Key, and there were songs like Bender off of Addicted, and there were songs like Deconstruction, or you know, or Pandemic, and then Monsoon or Texada or any of these things off of Ghost. And um, once I started putting it together, I was like, well, how the hell am I going to fit this into one record? And at first, I was thinking, well, I'll make it some sort of like sporadic thing. And I was like, well, no. Then it ends up sounding like a schizophrenic statement, right? When it it's just a natural occurrence. So then I thought, well, a double record, but then I couldn't express exactly what that process was meant to express within a two record thing without it getting sort of convoluted and incestuous. So uh, uh, I decided through the advice of some friends that had heard it as well, it's like, well, it sounds like there's four different vibes. So why don't you just like make each one of them unto themselves and then you won't have to compromise any of what it's trying to say. And that's essentially what happened, right? So. And those songs that you talked about, those were kind of the, the beginning points of each? Well, no, um, I'd say about 80% of each record were all written around the same time. I wrote 40 or 50 songs, which is, I tend to do that now more than in the past, where I'll just write a shit ton of songs and then just sort of sort them out in the mix, right? Yeah. But then when I actually started working on the records, I obviously did them one at a time just so I could give them my full attention. And during that time, certain things changed. You know, a song maybe didn't make the cut, or like, you know, one of them ended up being elaborated on, or whatever, right? But for the most part, the majority of the record was written, you know, three, four years ago, of all four records I'm in. Okay. And I thought one really interesting thing about it was how it, a bit unconventionally, starts fairly soft, you know, and dark, and then ends fairly soft. You know, the kind of an, that arc. Of yeah. The sound. Well, I mean, I did an interview a few minutes ago in a semi-lucid state. I was like, hey. <laughs> yes. But um, what the records are supposed to mean is like nothing. You know, I'm not trying, I'm not on a mission. I'm not trying to make any sort of grand operation mind crime, you know, Pink Floydian sort of statement. Right. However, the way I work is I find themes and I find uh, sort of a music that's loosely based on like a story and, and so I find that engaging for me right so you know maybe it's just a product of me being a nerd or whatever but that's it's I, I do that and so there is a very definite story to the records but I guess what I was trying to do while I was make, making the records as well is make them so you can listen to them on, unto themselves without having to have that sort of convoluted theme be in your mind and then therefore you're not able to enjoy them, right? Right. But I guess the theme that I was trying to make now that we're going in that direction is key, the word, uh, I got it from a fortune cookie or something, right? Where it's like the whole idea is like it's life force, right? You know, I had a baby recently and I had a lot of, you know, some people in my family die and a bunch of things that just really made that sort of uh, a theme. It was of interest to me. So key it's like you're born, right? And you know, there's so many things that are unknown, right? So there's a real tentative nature to that record where it's trying to let it go, but it often stops it. And there's like a lot of shadows on the record. And I think that the point of that is in your early stages of that development, it's, there's a real fear of the unknown, fear of what's in the shadows, right? And at the uh, end of it, there's almost like an epiphany with the song Key, where it's like, well, let's give this a shot. Let's, you know, let's see if maybe there's more to those shadows or less to those shadows than, you know, you're uh, assuming. So Addicted, I guess what I was trying to do with Addicted is, you know, once you're born, it's sort of like, you know, I find you watch kids grow and you watch people get older and you get further and further from that source, right? And as you do, it's like our personalities become less and less about what the true nature is and more a product of all our you know addictions right or not even addictions but the things that we think define us right like our cars or our guitars or our you know fancy amps or girlfriends or sex or drugs or rock and roll or whatever right and then all of a sudden you become that you know Devin and you know yourself and all of us become like that's what we are right so I guess the whole thing with deconstruction is like you know getting towards 40 it's just like well what's what's the meaning of all this, you know, like, why are we here? Like, 
And on some level, there's this sort of arrogance, I think, with humanity that we're able to understand it. And if not understand it, there's this sort of sense that in order to like enjoy it, we have to control it, right? right. So deconstruction is like really a record about that. It's like the character is trying to control this uncontrollable chaos of life, right? And so it's a stream of conscious record that goes in a ton of different directions. And it's supposed to be that it's, you know, this philosophical or religious quest that's constantly being trumped by, you know, the fact that we're douchebags, right? Yeah, and, you sure. know, there's like in the childhood things and the, you know, and the, uh, the addictions and everything and the ghosts of that, right? So the record goes from really serious to really like uh, uh, puerile to really adolescent to really complicated to really, you know, a lot of things, right? Uh, cresting in the song Deconstruction, which is, uh, you know, uh, second or third to last song. And then at that point, the character is supposed to be presented with what he is assuming that he's been looking for, right? And it's something absurd. It's a cheeseburger. And the whole idea of it being a cheeseburger is the point of if you stare at something or if you're too uh, concerned about what the reality of things is, you miss the point that maybe what you've been looking at and focusing on isn't of any importance anyway. Right. And so... Uh, the record ends with the character having confronted his fear and recognizing that, you know, if you're held accountable for your actions, then there really is nothing to be afraid of, right? Because it's not like you're going to trump yourself, which didn't happen. So at the end of Deconstruction, you're left with the character saying, okay, well, now that I know this, what are we going to do, right? Like, do we kill it? Do we, like, you know, now that we know that everything is futile, now that we know it's an illusion, like, what do we do? Do we just, like, you know? go fuck everything and like let it go or you know and so that's why ghost comes because then the choice is yeah it's you know we've already jumped into the volcano and we're heading towards dying so how do we choose to spend the rest of our time and ghost the character's like well let's just do something that's like pretty let's have a good time let's go hang out with our family let's like not to think think too much about it and there it goes and at the end of ghost <coughs> loops back into key right and the uh, idea of it being called ghost is because you know with the awareness I guess that the character is now made that like that quest was just kind of like spinning your wheels you still are you have to marry your passion forgive yourself right so mm -hmm. philosophically it's a real typical kind of like you know you know paradise lost kind of thing you know Guar did it a couple of years before I did it right <laughs> but I'm not trying to say anything with it other than I find that theme was really interesting at the time. I like those kind of stories. It's like Star Wars or whatever. It's the same shit, right? right. But I guess uh, more than that is I'm trying to make sure that the records don't come across as being some sort of pretentious mess and more so just like, hey, it's four really different records that I think individually are really cool, right? Right. You can take it at either level. Yeah, or just don't take it at all. That's fine too, right? Right, exactly. Um, do you see that? I mean, do you see that evolving into anything for your future albums, or are you just gonna try to go somewhere completely different? I have no idea yet. I've got a bunch of ideas currently that are all kind of uh, struggling to take precedence in terms of what the next record is going to be. But what's always been the case with me and my uh, process is that when something hits me that I think is really engaging, then I go for it, you know, and so far I've got a bunch of options, but I'm waiting for the one to be like, okay, well, there's where, there's where we're going next, right? right? But I've got, you know, four options right now, and each one of them has the potential of being really interesting, to me at least, right? Cool. The production on these albums sure. are, you know, extreme, extremely good, and uh, Thanks, Deconstruction dude. especially is a very... Very dense, dense album. Um, yeah, yeah. And you've been a fan of multi-tracking. Yeah. And um, so, just um, I'm just curious, how did you develop your ear for for production and mixing and everything? Fucking up a lot of records right. for other people and myself. Really? I think failure is a great motivator. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when it's public. Right. Like, well, we're not gonna do that again. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. But I think it's good. I think if you're not afraid to fail, it like eventually you'll get it right, right? Is there any specific point that you that you really got? Your, you know, your mixing chops where you wanted them to be? Well, I opened a studio in Vancouver three, four years ago, right when I was doing all the writing. And I produced a whole slew of bands, you know what I mean? And uh, all the bands I worked with, none of them had money really, so I mixed them all. And then it just started getting better and better. And, you know, I managed to invest in like a 
a better rig and then uh, you know the sonic elements started coming together and just trial and error right and I think other than certain I always have that multi-tracked element to certain elements of my work from here on out but I really look forward to doing a bunch more live off the floor sort of things right a bunch of ghosts was live off the floor and I mean I enjoy that right because right. I kind of like that uh, you know swinging it in the wind and you know Again, the failure thing, I think it's really cool. That's what's cool about improvising, too. It's just like, yeah. you know, if you Jeez. fail, you're going to fail hard. But if you win, you're like on point, right? Right. Very satisfying. Yeah. And I know that um, as far as these four albums go, you were looking to try to use different musicians for each each one. So can you talk a little bit about um, who you use for Deconstruction and Ghost and why you, you know, sure. decided to, to work with those people? Deconstruction, the core of it, was uh i guess me dirk and ryan right like um for some records the most important elements are you know the sequencing or or um you know the special bass player or whatever but for the most part as a guitar player the drummer is uh who i who i uh can bounce things off of you know the most right so choosing drummers has always been like uh, an exciting part of making a record for me right yeah. um, with deconstruction uh, you know the obvious choice of course would have been Gene Hoagland right but the problem with that is because strapping no longer exists I didn't want to give people you know the idea yeah was. yeah right. and you know a lot of people are just like okay well um, you know who would you use right and so I thought well I want to use people who uh, have the personality that is similar to what the record's trying to put across. And I mean, I've known Dirk for a while. Dirk Verburen, he's in soil work and aborted and a bunch of stuff. And uh, he's just a real sweetheart, man. He's like, you know, 85 pounds soaking wet and he's got a good sense of humor and he likes the same sort of music I do. And he's really, really good at improvising, you know? Really? Like a lot of times when I work with drummers, it's like, you know, we bash it out and then it's the same every time and there's really something to be said for that. Right. But with Dirk, I'll be playing a riff and all of a sudden he'll be playing drums and it's like really, um, it was really exciting for me to like not have to explain my ideas to people because mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, drummers get confused by how I write. I'll be like, they'll be like, well, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I have no idea. It's like that, right? right. <laughs> like, right. But with Dirk, he'd be like, oh, yeah, I have no idea either, but it is like that, right? And so it was a lot of fun to work with him. We had a lot of laughs, right? And because he is, like, fun and lighthearted, he was like a guy that could do the real grinding, blasty sort of stuff without sort of the baggage of the whole, you know, <clears throat> uber serious right. death or black metal thing, right? Which I do appreciate, but I didn't want for this record. And then for, like, the really sort of hammer at home sort of stuff, um, I use Ryan because Ryan's my live drummer. And I've been working with him for about nine years, and uh, he's getting, like, and has gotten to be fantastic, man. Like, okay. he's just constantly, like, kind of blowing me away, because not only for this recent tour has he learned a bunch of Dirk stuff, but his consistency is, like, phenomenal. Like, the guy is just, like, a machine. And he's, you know, he's in shape, too, right? So it's yeah. like, you know, when he plays, it's like a powerhouse, and I don't have to think about it. And so... You know, because Ryan was there and we're both, everybody in this sort of weird ass music that I do, we're all kind of like trying to make a living, right? Money is always tight. So I wanted to include him. So when I did do it live, he was a part of it and he, he blew me away, right? Because yeah. not only did he come in and play this stuff um, way better and way more proficiently than I had given him credit for, yeah. but uh, consistently and it's like, I don't know what it is about consistency, but I find that in a specifically in a live format, uh, one of the most, if not the most important uh, traits of a, of a drummer, and I've never had a more consistent drummer than Ryan. And he knocked it out of the park. He listened to Planet of the Apes, for example, and there's elements of that that I never expected him to do, right? right. So the two of them together really comprised like a great uh, sonic overview. And because they're both such pleasant people to be around there is no drama you know what I mean great great and that's it and then other than that on deconstruction I had a ton of friends do like guest vocals and everything but I've tried to like avoid uh, making a big deal about that because I think it's really easy for those people to become like this 
cheesy selling point for the record as opposed to like a texture for something that I was trying to make theatrical and it required voices different than mine. Right. That being said, they're, all of them are in bands that are like, you know, I'm big fans of and, right. you know, and it's a real honor to have them. Right. Why did you decide, you know, of the four albums to have all those guests on Deconstruction particularly? Be well, because Deconstruction is supposed to be that exorcism, that facing of that fear of metal that I had for so long and I think that if you're going to uh, go into your fear of anything artistically, if you do it half-assed, you know, you're never going to conclude it. So I was right. like, not only are we going to face this, but we're going to put an orchestra on it. We're going to put every singer that I like on it. And we're going to put a choir on it. And we're going to mix it with, you know, you know, Jens. And like, right. we'll do it for real, right? right? And then, no matter what the statement is, because I rarely know what the statement is going to be till it's done. It's going to be framed in such a way that it's like, there's the statement. As you mentioned, money has been a very hard thing to deal with in the, in the metal industry and stuff like that. So how, yeah, how has that been for you? Uh, in Vancouver, there's, uh, you know, the scene, Nickelback and Theory of a Dead Man and like a bunch of bands that have made obscene amounts of money right mm -hmm. and to be perfectly honest they're good bands dude like mm -hmm. there's there's no no ill will I mean you can say what you want about any of these bands but they're good bands dude and they do what they do well and it sounds good and they got a great show right. but it, that sort of music sells and it's as simple as that when those guys wake up in the morning that's the type of music they write you know right. I mean more power to them right Apparently when I wake up, I decide to write convoluted concepts about cheeseburgers, right? And it's like the market for that is slightly smaller, so. Yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, I, uh, I really enjoy what I do. And I think it is in this day and age where the industry has changed to the point where you have to uh, be conscious of the people who support you and you have to be conscious of your motivations and your family and mortgages and all this sort of stuff. I think that the fight to continue to make music that is sort of left of center has its own rewards, right? And I think that, um, you know, for example, I've got a lot of support from, you know, PV and Fractal and Planet Waves and like, you know, Sadowski and like a bunch of companies that are just like, hey, you know, we get it, it's cool. Right. You know, you're maybe not ripping up the charts, but you're doing something that is important to you and important to, you know, certain people that listen to you. Right. So I think that the bottom line is I'm happy, right? <laughs> is money tight for this type of music? Oh yeah, totally. Like, I mean, we're losing a ton of money on this tour and all this sort of stuff, but right. I gotta stop there because I don't want it to sound like I'm complaining about it as much as it's a fact. Right. So, you know, when we went and got Prague's Philharmonic Orchestra, I mean, dude, like, we paid for that. You know, my right. wife and I paid for that, right? And it's like, so, you know, getting drummers and people, a lot of it's goodwill, right? And goodwill also extends to the people who support it. Like someone asked me, they asked me constantly, what do you think about downloading? I'm like, download everything I do, please. Because the end of it is that I really want people to hear it, more so than I'm, I'm doing this for some sort of like, you know, job security. However, the bottom line with that is, it's my source of income. So if the money streams dry up, I can't do it. Right. I really can't because, you know, I'm not going to let my family starve. So I'll go, you know, work at a job if I have to, right? I feel like the people who have been listening for a while all want to support you. Though, and there's, you know? there's the exact point is that the talk about downloading affecting certain people is absolutely the case. I think it, it's affected the uh, industry in general. But the people who have supported what I do are absurdly generous men, you know? Right. They'll buy it. the special edition. They'll buy you know, uh, shirts that we sell online, they'll buy things like this. And my opinion of the stuff that we sell is we try and make it the best that we can. But it's, in a lot of ways, it's a, it's a gesture that the fan base um, uh, offers in order to sort of signify that they want it to keep going, right? right. And so we make it work and it's really cool. All right. Well, they, were, they just respect it so much. That, right back at them. That's the one thing that they can do. Right back at them, man. You know, obviously these last few albums have been a different process considering, um, you know, becoming clean a few years ago and things like that. Um, do you think if you could, you know, go back, you would have had your whole career been as your current lifestyle? Or do you think it was like, you know, a necessary no process? Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, I, I would never change anything about the past. You know what I mean? Like, it's, I don't even, 
think it's worth thinking about in all honesty but uh no man everything that i've done has led me to where i am and i'm happy good yeah and i had a great time dude when i was drinking and partying i had a great time so right. so it's just where you need to be in the in the current present moment. i guess i mean it's like it's where i have to be more so than right. <laughs> you know need to be right right could you possibly just tell me anything that you haven't told anyone else in an interview before Anything you can think of. <laughs> I got one ball that's bigger than the other. Definitely, definitely bigger. All yes, right. sir. You heard it. All right. There we go. <laughs> All right. Hey, a little more serious note. <laughs> it's pretty serious. It is pretty serious, yeah. you know, as long as everything's okay. Sure. No, I mean, <laughs> well, okay, what, I haven't, what haven't I told anybody else? Uh, I'm thinking about jam right now. <laughs> What no, kind? Uh, strawberry. But uh, I it's think that... Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. totally. Let's get some crumpets and rock that shit. Yeah. I got nothing really to say. I think that's the biggest... Um, I think that's the biggest defining thing about what I do, man. It's like everything's a hypothesis. Like some people are just like, what did you mean by that? Or like, why did you say this? Or like, you know, what's going to... I'm like, I have no idea. Mm. You know, it's like someone came up to me yesterday and they're asking about a song on Ghost about like, well, what were you trying to say with this? And I'm like, I'm on autopilot, man. I was watching a movie while I was writing that song. You know what I mean? Right. Well, that, that kind of goes along with what you were saying about deconstruction. Yeah. You know, kind of the uh, accepting of the unknown. Well, know. and also I think that the nature of music, it's like there's a philosopher, Carl Jung, and I don't know enough about him to like sound like I'm an authority, but you know, sort of an armchair uh, observation of him. He's got this whole idea of like the collective, of co collective unconscious right. where, you know, and I may be wrong here, but from what I understand, it's like creativity and the, it's like a pool of human intellect and, and, and experience that music is just a part of. So it's not like any of us write music. It's just music's just kind of like there, there, right? And so I think that as artists, we're like, you know, we're workers, right? We just kind of like grab it according to like well our life experiences led us to this point where where we're privy to like that melody or this sound or this idea right and so i mean i don't know what the hell most of it's about but it it really resonates with me and uh you know and i definitely don't think it's like mine or yours or anybody it's just what it is it's just like music right right well the love for that for that melody or that sound is enough totally you don't need and when I'm writing lyrics, it's always phonetic too, right? Like I'll think, oh, I know that that riff, the word starts with a B and ends with an S and then it goes to this high note. And then eventually it just turns into words, right? And it's like, sometimes they make sense and sometimes they don't. And I think your subconscious mind directs that, of course. It's not like, you know, you're channeling anything. I don't believe in that. But I think that your subconscious mind eventually just, you know, you wanted to say, it starts with a B, ends with an S. You wanted to say bananas or whatever, right? right? Yeah. And eventually you're like, oh, I guess that line. Says yeah. bananas on that riff. Or I totally whatever. get that all the time yeah. when I write. The the word comes before any sort of meaning. Totally, and yeah. that's sometimes more important. Totally, and I think you can probably get abstract words that you can make sense of by changing the adjective or whatever before it, right? So. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Just considering that you've had such a lengthy experience in the music industry, metal industry, um, is there any sort of advice that you could give to young aspiring musicians? Uh. Oh, I don't know, man, like, play from your heart or I guess don't play at all, right? right? Unless, of course, you're able to write pop music and then write as much as it is as you can and, like, buy your folks a house, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's uh, the all the old age old, <laughs> you know, uh, inspirational quotes they all actually apply you know yeah. if you fall get back up you know yeah. don't shit where you eat right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> all those things make sense i mean it's like any job man it's like if you can't handle failure then i don't think success is an option so maybe just learn to fail efficiently and then keep going <laughs> all, right. all right great thanks buddy thank you so much thanks, i really appreciate you it too, brother all right and thank you guys for watching